Hello friends, it's Harry here. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about some Linux commands. Um, if you are a customer working in the Linux system and you have access to the command line, stay with me. I think the content of this video can be helpful. Okay, the first command I want to talk about is a, a PWD. I'm going to type the command on the screen. So this command shows you the current path. This can be very helpful. Sometimes you are doing a lot of work and you forget where you are. And you can use this PWD command to find out the current path. The next command I want to talk about is, so this command shows you the content in the, in the current folder. Uh, there is an option dash L. So you get information with this uh, dash L option. You can see those permission settings, the owner, the group, and the timestamp uh, of those files. There is another option, so let's try that. So this A option uh, shows us the hidden files. So in the screen, you can see uh, there are those files that start a, a single dot. So those are hidden files. OK. Uh, the next command I want to talk about is clear. So this command can clear the screen. Okay. Next command I want to talk about is CD. So CD can take you to different folders. So let's see. Uh, suppose I want to go to the documents folder. I can do CD documents. Okay. Now. There is a folder called temp here. I want to go there. I can do cd temp. OK. Now, suppose I want to go back one level. I can do cd dot. So this means you want to go back one level. And we can confirm that with the pwd command. OK. Now, after you, you do some work, you may want to go to the home directory. You can just type cd. This one will always take you to the home directory. OK, um, the next command I want to talk about is mkdir. So the mkdir command uh, can help you create folders. So suppose I want to create a folder called temp1. Let's do temp1. OK, so you can see the folder is there. Uh, let's go into the folder. Suppose I want to create a file called a.sys. So let's do that. OK, see the file is there. Uh, now, um, I want to delete this command. What should I do? I can use the rm command. So rm a dot says, use this command to delete the files. OK, so the file is gone. What about uh, deleting folders? How can we delete uh, folders? We can use the dash r option. So uh, say we want to delete the folder temp1. We can do rm dash r temp1. OK, so the folder. OK, um, the next command I want to talk about is find. This find command is very useful. Uh, it can help you to find some uh, files. Um, suppose we want to find a sets file called the T1401. We can do find dash name T41.sets. OK, so it shows that uh, this file is in the folder called the scripts. Uh, you can also use a wildcard uh, uh, with the find command. So we can do something like this. OK, so this command uh, shows us all the sets files uh, in the subdirectories. OK, the next command I want to talk about is grab. Let's go to this folder, script. OK, so there are some log files here. Uh, we can use the ls command to show the log files. OK, now suppose I find the log files with the word error. I can do grab error star.log. OK, so it shows me all these um, uh, log files. OK, um, 
If you want to find the error in both lowercase and uppercase, you can use the dash i op. So that's uh, grep dash i e r r star one. Okay, so now you can see you have more findings. So what if you want to save these findings? You can use a file redirection. So you can do the command followed by this greater than sign. That means you want to send the output to some file. You, let's call it my file. Okay, so you can see there is a, a file called my file. You can take a look. Um, it's a very it's a very large file. Okay, uh, the next command I want to talk is uh, mv. So mv command is used to uh, rename files. So let's see. We have a file here called c.sass. Okay, now suppose I want to call this c.sass d.sass. We want to rename it. So we can use mv c.sass d.sass. Okay, so now the c.sass is gone. We have the d.sass uh, on the screen. Okay, um, so let's run clear. Okay, um, the next command I want to talk about is cp command. cp command is used to copy uh, files or folders. So suppose I want to copy this d.sass to d1.sass. I can do cp d.sass, d1.sass. Okay, so you can see the sense is is there. Okay, um, what if I want to copy folders? So let's let's see how we can do that. L let me create a folder temp one here. Oh, sorry, there's already a temp one. Let's do folder one. Okay, mkdir folder one. Okay, into this folder one, and I want to copy. Uh, D dot says in in this into this folder. Okay, so you can see the file is there. Okay, um, so our task is to copy folder. I want to copy this folder one to folder two. Do cp dash r. So this is to copy folder. So folder one, folder two. Okay, so now you can see the folder two is. And if we go into the folder, so you can see the file is there as well. Okay, that's the CP command. The last command I want to talk about is div. So div can be used to compare files and compare folders. Let's see how that works. Okay, suppose I want to compare the d.sass and d1.sass. I can do d div d dot says d one dot says okay so there's no uh, let me modify the d dot says uh, let's let me add a run here okay let's do the div again oh, it shows the difference okay um, to compare the two folders uh, let me go into the folder two and I want to modify this d dot says uh, let's see. Let's do product. Okay. So now we can run the div command on these two folders, folder one and the folder two. Okay. So it shows you that uh, in these two folders there is a file called d.sass, and it shows you the difference. So this this div command is very useful. Um, I think that's all the commands I want to talk about um, in this video. Next, I want to talk about some um, Linux scripts. After your knowledge of the Linux commands, you may want to write some short scripts. So as programmers, we have a lot of uh, repetitive tasks. So if you can use uh, the scripts to do those tasks, that uh, greatly improves efficiency. So the first uh, script I want to talk about is a script that uh, can submit multiple SAS programs uh, for Optron. So let's look at some SAS programs. 
OK. I'm going to do it on the command line first. Then we'll look at the ripped. So let's do a pipe here. Let's do AWK. OK. Print dollar $9 means uh, we want to print a nice column. So basically, we are printing the sets file names. And then we can do another pipe. SED. This carrot means the beginning of the line. And we add a sets followed by a space. OK, so you can see we're almost there. Now we just uh, direct the output to some file. Let's call it uh, batch1. OK, we can take a look at this file. It looks good. We just need to give the user execute permission. And we do it this way. Change user plus x batch1. And you can check the permission. OK, so the user does have execute permission. Now let's run this file to submit all the sets programs for batch1. OK, let's clear the screen. The next script that I want to take a look, I want to look is um, chalk. So let's take a look. Uh, it looks long, but it actually this script is very simple. This line is a Shaban online. And this line determines which shell we're going to use to run the script. Second line, we are using a for loop. Uh, the other star means the argument of the script. OK, in line 4, we print the name of the log file. In line 5, we are using this egrab command. This is a, a variant of the grab command. The grab command uses uh, regular expressions. The egrab command uses uh, extended regular expressions. Uh, the dash i option, that means uh, we want to ignore the case. The dash n option, that means we want to print the line number. And here we have all messages. So what we're going to do with this script is we use this script to check the log files. And we print out those lines that contain the messages here. So let's, let's run this script. OK, so we get a lot of output here. Uh, let's clear the screen. Uh, you can also run this uh, script on a single log file. So let's do that. Let's do it on t1402.log. OK, so you can see this log file has a warning. OK, um, I want to talk about another script set to this. So in the CHA log script, we put all those messages in the script. So what we can do is to move those messages into a file. And then in the script, we just read the file. So that way, the script is much shorter. So I already put those messages into this file. So you can see there are 27 messages we are interested in. And we are using this uh, script to read the message. So it's called a CHK log. OK. So we have the Shaban line there. We have a for loop. We print the sys log name. And we use this egrab command. Here we have the dash i dash n and the dash f. This dash f option means we want to read the, the file message.txt. OK, run this file. OK, so it works. OK, uh, clear the screen. The next uh, script I want to talk about is called CGG case. So what this script is doing it's uh, looking for some sets files, um, but the name of the file is in uppercase. So this script is going to change it to lowercase. So first line is a Shaban line. Second line, so we're using a for loop. We're looking for those files um, whose name uh, is in uppercase. And the third line, uh, here we're using a com command uh, substitution. 
uh, we print the name, we, we use the tr command to the uppercase to lowercase, and we call it a new file name. Here we have this uh, print command, we print out some message, and in line 5, use the mv command to do the renaming. So let's look at this folder. So we have three files here uh, whose name whose names are in uppercase. We can run this uh, change case uh, script to change them to lowercase. So let's do that. Okay. So now uh, all those files uh, whose names are in uppercase are changed. Okay. The last script that I want to talk about is uh, called a replace. Okay, so what does this uh, script do? So the first line is a Shaban line. The second line, we have this prefix, it's underscore. And we have an old word, part two. We have a new word, part three. And then we do this for loop. We are using the sed command to replace the old, old word by the new word. And we create some new files. Okay, so let's see how we can use this script. First is this uh, grab command. I want to see which SAS program has the word part two. Okay, so you see those those SAS program has this part two, and um, we can we can create some new files, but with the part two replaced by by the word part three. So let's do that. Okay, so now you can see we have those uh, new underscore files. So let me clear the screen. We do this one. So you can see they are here. And if we use a grab command, uh, so you can see the part two has been replaced by the word uh, part three. Okay. I think this is do it for this video. Uh, I hope this is uh, helpful. I'm going to put the related materials in my GitHub account and I will leave a link in the description of this video. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you.